All right, my friends, welcome back to Build Science 201. Thermal management, guys, our fourth control layer. We got three more videos for you in this Build Science series. What are we doing today? Continuity. Continuity. Let's get going. Build Science 201 is sponsored by Anderson Windows and Doors, Huber Engineered Woods, and Prosico. This episode is brought to you by Rockwool. Hi everyone, I'm Matt Reisinger, and today I want to talk to you about a brand that has a remarkable 120 year legacy in producing quality, performance focused products. That's Anderson Windows. In the South, especially here in Texas, that legacy really comes to life with the Anderson 100 series. Gosh, I think I started using this line when it very first came out, and from the beginning, I have really liked this window. This line enables you to choose dark colors without sacrificing performance. That's right style that doesn't compromise on quality. One of the key features of the 100 series is Fibrex, Anderson's proprietary material. It's actually two times stronger than vinyl, which means you won't experience flex over time. Your weather stripping stays tight, and that's gonna ensure that both air and water performance, water holdout that is, remain top notch. Now let's talk about performance enhancements. Anderson is expanding their triple pane offerings, which is a fantastic option for energy efficiency. You can find triple pane windows available in the A series, a Theus certified E series, and now even in the 400 series at select locations. So whether you're looking for style, strength, or energy efficiency, Anderson has you covered. With a commitment to performance that you can trust that these windows are gonna stand the test of time. Thanks for joining me today, and if you're considering new windows for your home, definitely check out Anderson and see the difference for yourself. All right, Steve, thermal continuity, where do we start? Well, we can start at the bottom, we can start at the top, it really doesn't matter as long as the two connect. Yeah, makes sense. So first off, just define the term thermal. What are we talking about here? Thermal is, you know, energy movement, basically. Yep. Right? Yep. So here's a house I built a couple years ago. We've already showed a few photos of this. This is the perfect wall house, uh, Monopoly framing. You know, this is typical for almost every house we build in America today, wood framing. And wood has some amount of thermal resistance, right? Studs have thermal resistance. But most of the time when we think of thermal resistance, we think insulation, right? We think maybe some fluffy stuff that goes in between the studs. That's what we've done. That's how we've done it for years and years or some blown in fluffy stuff up in the attic uh, enough to allow that heat in the wintertime to not escape our houses or in the summertime to kind of keep that heat away from the house so we can air condition the inside. But as we talk about this topic, especially as we think about continuity, one of the best ways for us to break the thermal bridge, meaning these two by four studs offer some thermal resistance, but it is minimal, somewhere around uh, R1 per inch. So where the two by four is, we're getting around an R4, whereas if we put an R13 bat in there, you know, some fluffy stuff, some insulation yeah. in between the studs, we wouldn't truly have a wall that was an R13 wall because of all the studs. You know, think about that header right there being a nice solid two by header. We've got all these rafters in the way. So let's check out what- And understand, windows. Another They're thermal point. barriers. Yeah, that's right? right. And those windows are quite a bit, offer quite a bit less resistance to heat flow than a wall does typically. Before we move on, I am gonna, I'm just gonna coin a new phrase. Let's hear it. An emphasized educational moment, Ooh. an EEM. Right, because I'm tired of hearing this on social media. All right, people tell me, well, I put that insulation there to keep the cold out. Right, cold doesn't move. Repeat after me cold doesn't move. Right, heat moves from hot to cold. Yep, from more to less. And that's all that ever happens. Yeah. So if you're talking about thermal, heat moves from hot to cold. Cold mm. doesn't move. Stop putting in insulation thinking, oh, I'm going to keep the cold here. No, you're keeping the heat out. So on this house, instead of doing inside insulation, we did exterior insulation. 
And that's where all the insulation went on this house was on the entire outside of the house. So this gable side you can see here, this was what we talked about in a previous episode where we've got a nice continuous air and water barrier. Also want you to notice, Steve, that there's a couple of shear tabs on here. These are basically uh, kind of an L bracket that was bolted on to the framing behind there. And then the black stuff is waterproofing, including uh, that wire that's sticking through so that later we could come back and put a porch roof on there. There you go. But we had as minimal contact, as minimal, the least amount of thermal bridging as possible. So you'll see that on another photo in a second. And if you slide over to the other- well, I just want to point out with Big Red here. Yep. Like you don't get a better cross section of continuity yeah. right there. That's right. right. You get to see that The wall and there. the ceiling insulation are literally touching yeah. each other. And you can really see it on this picture as well. Yeah, that's just an insulation box. So now where that roof insulation comes down, you can see we've cut it on an angle. I also like to point out on this side, you kind of see it on the left if you'd uh, blow that photo up just a little bit or, or circle that for us. Those shear tabs on the left had a C channel welded to them. And now that insulation runs continuous behind my porch ceiling, that's gonna be a metal porch roof basically that gets installed there. And everything is continuous behind there. The rain screen's continuous, the insulation, and the air and water barrier are continuous behind there. So this was a great way to greatly reduce the amount of heat flow on the outside of the house, flowing through the walls on the outside of the house. Right, and for those of you, this is the perfect wall, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Right, so this is a project that I did a number of years ago um, with, a, a, I would consider him a very well-educated builder. Their subs are very well-educated. We did a two by six wall with zip sheathing, and then we were adding two inches of polyiso to the outside. So what you're seeing here is, this is all the insulation that the framer put up prior to adding um, a number of things. So you can see this piece goes up here and we have our little return of the soffit. And notice there we have some plywood that will then connect our furring strips too. So we take care of that. Down here we have the electrical box and we make sure that that's on the outside for continuity's sake. And then as we move over here, you'll see all of the porch roof is framed on top of that insulation here. That's really good. So in other words, that insulation is totally continuous behind that roof section. And now we don't have that thermal bridging happening in those spots. Right. Here's my house, Steve, and I did the same thing. What you're looking at here is my front porch uh, on the right and my garage on the left. And you'll notice on this photo on the right, before the header that got put in, got bolted in, was put on, we put the foam on first. So you're seeing where his red line is there. Uh, we've got exterior insulation, and then this is also exterior insulation yeah, right, right here. here. And then we bolted through that uh, in order to make sure that that whole area had a good thermal break and had a yeah. good blanket of insulation through that entire section. Yeah, and if you remember on Build Science 101, we talked about building the green box and then adding everything to it. So that's a fine illustration of what's happening there. And yep. then you can see the guys hard at work installing it. You can actually see that insulation down here. We have the ledger board and then they'll just continue on the way up there. Exactly. So this is a remodeling project. Hmm. Um, yeah, it was very inter interesting. It was for a builder friend of mine um, that wanted to turn his existing, I don't know, we we're probably at the time, I don't know, maybe about 75, 80 year old house. And inner city, it's just outside of uh, Boston and he wanted to turn it into zero energy. So if we think about our Yeti cooler that we've shown a number of times, then we really wanted to just encompass this house in insulation. Yep. So we furred it out. You can see we have XPS there where we mm. use those as the furring strips. So it's actually Neat. thermal furring. Um, the other thing here is we had old windows in this house that were single pane. So rather than remove them, remove all of the trim, we just got double glazed windows sized and we use those as storm windows oh, neat. on the outside of the house. How cool. And we sprayed closed cell on the whole house. 
and then we just reclad over that furring strips mm. and that's wild that's even this it's hard to even tell it's the same house from that photo a no. little bit right? so we built just basically a cooler and we never touched anything on the inside of the house that's neat thermal brakes what about putting a deck out here that has no attachment to the house how about that all right that's fantastic so this is a great photo of that because looking down the broad side there, you can actually see there is nothing that touches the deck and touches the house. Big air gap between there. There's a big air gap there. So you basically step out of one structure onto the other structure rather than bringing in some beams and having that thermal bridge happening there at the deck. Yeah, a lot of times we'd cantilever something out. Yeah. It would go in, you know, twice as far and then cantilever out half as far. Uh, and a lot of times it would be a steel beam that people are bringing in, which is highly conductive. For sure. So continuity. It is this simple. If we're going to use insulation and we use it under slab, we can turn it up the wall. Mm -hmm. We can bring our vapor barrier in and tape it off. And then we can continue down here and attach to that at a later date. Yeah, that's so great. sequencing is and planning is pretty important in terms of continuity because you really have to have these joints planned out well mm -hmm. and understood how you're gonna do that, make sure the subs are in line with what your plan is. So this is somewhat of an exotic case. We did a slab on grade above a basement. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the people really wanted to have a concrete slab for their first floor material. Mm -hmm. And then we had the, the slab was finished and that was the finished product, but it was above a basement. So wow. we didn't really have to worry about insulating it in this direction, but we most definitely had to worry about insulating it to in that outside. direction, to the outside. And you can see we have our two inches and that is a GPS, right? It's a graphite infused polystyrene. And the GPS reappears here. So we actually have concrete here, we have concrete there, but we have two inches. This is at a door threshold, and we have our two inches there. And you know, this is a detail where you sit there and say, yeah, it's you're really pushing the envelope of return on investment versus what you're doing. But the difference with this house is, this is a passive house, right? So given that it's a passive house, this is a requirement. Mm. of that standard. So we yeah. had to kind of elevate our game a little further than normal. Makes sense. So in this slide here, this is a pretty common basement detail for us, right? We run insulation out, we run it up a couple inches, we pour the slab in here, mm -hmm. and now we've eliminated that thermal bridge from the concrete wall to the concrete slab and we've isolated it. In other words, that concrete's gonna stop shy of hitting the wall concrete. The foam is gonna stay in the middle. So when you're done pouring that slab, that slab will either be level or below the top of that Yeah, foam. it'll basically be level with that. This is that four inches for our slab and gotcha. then we'll be able to bring down our insulation on the top here and set it right down so on top of that. that's a perfect thermal break. Yeah. I like it. This is another exotic. So in this case here, what we did was we brought our foundation wall up and then we hung our floor joists hmm. down inside of it. So we used, now the reason we did that is this is a perfect block. I'm gonna shorten the block there. And it is a recycled content EPS that is basically somewhat ICF form right? There's a 60% reduction in concrete use hmm. to get basically the same basement wall. Interesting. Um, they come in 16 inch tall blocks. Um, and then we hung the floor system off the inside. So that way there, we're getting that insulation value outside of our band joist. That's cool. I've not seen that before. Makes a lot of sense. Steve, this is my house and this is a detail I've stolen from you because I've seen you do this a bunch where I had at my personal home an existing concrete slab that was poured in the 1970s. I took the house down and rebuilt on top of it, but I wanted to add a good thermal break at my slab. In Texas, especially in the wintertime, our slab foundations are real cold. And uh, especially at my old house that had a slab foundation that had tile adhered to the slab, mm -hmm. and that was a freezing bathroom floor all mm -hmm. winter long. 
So by adding that insulation on top of the slab, and then I did a two layer Advantec detail, we don't need to get into all that right now, but the right. point is, now I took an old slab and I basically took what you've done in uh, Boston in basements for years and then more recently in slabs and I've taken that detail down to Texas and boy it works fantastic I've done that in a couple of houses now I absolutely love it you know what's important about this there's a lot of people that are going to sit there and say wow what a waste of money you know all of this and, and that it, there's no return on investment there but when you think about spaces or materials that my body physically touches mm -hmm. that are insulated like we can insulate the wall to R50. I never really go up and hang out or lay on the wall. Right. My kids might lay on the floor. My dog I'm does. walking on the floor all the time yep. in your bare feet or in socks. So insulating that floor, if you're thinking comfort issues, that's the reason to do it. I totally agree. And, and I would say that uh, certainly energy savings is a part of what we're yeah. talking about. Uh, but for me, comfort is a huge one. I still remember the very first time I visited you, maybe almost a decade ago now, and you were showing me some triple glazed windows in Boston. And I was asking you that same question, like, how much do you think these triple glazed windows will save energy bills over the course of a year? And you said, Matt, that's, that's great and all, and I'm sure it'll be something. But here's where it'll be a big deal. When my clients are sitting next to that table, and that window is right there, and it's 10 degrees outside, they're going to be comfortable at their dining room table. They're not going to feel the heat leaving their body and sucking onto that window and losing that. It's going to be a much more comfortable house. And your clients that have experienced old Boston houses in a new well-built home that you've designed, yeah. it's gotten built by a good builder. It's a world of difference. And they absolutely will pay for that comfort because it yeah. is a world of difference. Yeah. And if you're a builder out there and you say, well, where do I get information? How do I get better at what I'm doing? start building better houses, Sorry. right? Clients will pay for it. I work with builders all over the country in some areas that are you would consider very questionable of people building good houses. When people get educated, they spend the money on the right things that they see value in. That's you right. just have to give them the educational um, portion of that value. Big time. Steve, on our final slide here, actually, I think that's one of your houses. Yeah, this is the one of those lake houses that you came out. Shoreline Builders did this. Um, and this is very similar to, well, you know, did. yours is the retrofit model. This one has four inches of insulation in here. And then it has the two layers of Advantech there on top. And this is new construction yeah, on top nice. of the slab. That's well built. So. That's it for uh, for this very first module on thermal. We had a lot to learn today, but what's next on uh, thermal, Steve? So the next one is resistance, thermal resistance, a measured value. Ooh, good stuff, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on The Build Show. This episode was brought to you by Rockwool. Build Science 201 is sponsored by Anderson Windows and Doors, Huber Engineered Woods, and Prosico.